What's going on guys, Ryan vs. World checking in. Uh, for the first time in a very long time, I'd say pretty close to two years since I posted my last video. Uh, so today I'm going to be doing a quick review on Google Stadia. So similar format to my previous videos, I'm going to go over three pros, three cons. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so I'm going to be starting off with the pros. Uh, biggest pro in my eyes, I think, for Stadia now and even in the future is going to be the user friendliness and convenience of the service slash product in itself. So I think it's that that aspect of things has been a little bit distorted uh, during launch because people have had a lot of issues with receiving their packages and tracking codes or sorry, invite codes, which I'll get into a little bit later. Um, but for the most part, I think if everything lined up perfectly for you and moving forward, the user friendliness, convenience of Stadia, on point, a lot easier than any other console. So I was able to set up and get playing uh, in a matter of like probably 20 minutes. So as long as it took me to actually open up my package, sign up for my account with my invite code, and then I was able to access a whole variety of games that they offered and actually start playing live in time very quickly. So that in itself is pretty awesome. And the app that they have on the device, along with on the actual TV, Chromecast, whatever you're using to play with, is extremely user-friendly and simple. So that's definitely my first pro. So pro number two for me is definitely gonna have to be the controller. Uh, so I was actually extremely surprised by the fact, or I was extremely surprised with how premium this controller feels. So it's almost like a mix of the Xbox controller, Xbox One controller, and the PS4 controller. Uh, so Xbox layout in terms of like buttons and stuff like that, and then PlayStation in terms of the actual feel and the way it rests in your hand. So yeah, very awesome. Works perfectly for me. I've got relatively big hands. Anyways, um, it's got an awesome matte finish. I think all of the colorways have that matte finish. Uh, nice USB-C charging. Uh, which is extremely convenient in terms of like charging speeds and like being able to get this thing up and going quick. And then they've got two additions compared to uh, other controllers. So that's the Google Assistant button, which isn't really working uh, as of yet, but I'm definitely interested to see how that's going to tie into uh, gaming and whatnot, given they announced that you'll be able to upload things directly to YouTube and whatever. I'm interested to see how that's going to play out in the future. And then they've also got the screen capture button. Uh, so other consoles have this, but sometimes it's a matter of shifting through menus or making voice commands. This controller makes it one button and it's complete. So uh, yeah, controller is definitely a big thing and makes me have a little bit of faith in this thing in the future. All right, so pro number three is going to have to be how innovative of a product slash service Stadia is so far. So I'm gonna to touch on this point um, more at the ending of my video um, when I'm kind of closing things off. But uh, without the launch of Stadia, I mean, there wouldn't be nearly as much pressure as there is currently on Microsoft and Sony uh, to really uh, progress things and change up and, and innovate, I guess you could say. So I definitely think that it's a, it's a benefit to all gamers uh, whether or not Stadia ends up being a big hit as uh, the Sony's Microsoft's of the world are going to be putting a much bigger focus on this uh, cloud streaming uh, gaming service front moving forward. So definitely a big win and a pro in my eyes. But cons, 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 cons. Con number one is definitely lag and latency. Um, so let me start by telling you that I have been playing on my phone, um, P4, which is compatible with the launch so far. Um, and then I've been playing off of the Chromecast on my TV. Long story short, phone, no lag, TV slash Chromecast, good amount of lag. I think that's for two different reasons. Uh, three, actually. One is being the time I'm playing in a day. So, you know, you live in an apartment, things tend to slow down at peak hours. Uh, two is my internet speed to begin with. I've got 50 up and 50 down. I need to call my service provider and actually fix that because that's not gonna work moving forward. Also, make sure you have unlimited 
uh, unlimited usage because if you don't, you'll get a very expensive bill. Um, number three is I think that the screen size and stuff like that has to play with it. Uh, you know, on my phone, it's obviously a much smaller uh, device, so the requirements in terms of like internet speed that's needed, I feel like, is a lot less. Um, so yeah, lag, latency, big deal, uh, especially for people that are gamers right now and expect these high resolution games to load free, uh, like very flawlessly. Uh, that won't necessarily happen all the time with Stadia. Uh, so yeah, definitely a big deal and con number one for me. Con number two, the launch for Stadia was f***ing shit. It was terrible. So I was extremely disappointed. I ordered the Founders Edition. I'm like, hey, you know, I get my console like relatively quickly. I can sign up. I can be Ryan on Stadia. That is how Stadia World will identify me as the Ryan. That's amazing. But unfortunately that didn't happen. Um, A, because it's extremely unrealistic and there's definitely someone else that's gonna beat me to that punch who probably works for Google because Ryan is a very generic name. <laughs> but B, because I received my founder's box and then received my actual invitation code. So your way to sign up two days later. So huge gap there, extremely unimpressed by that. But it is what it is. Uh, and I think that Google kind of had uh, quick timelines that uh, they didn't necessarily prepare for uh, in full. Uh, so yeah, launch was definitely very rough in con number two but I have faith in the future of Stadia. Okay, so con number three for me is going to have to be pricing. So if you want to get started with Stadia, it's $129 to get the kit uh, that comes with the controller. And then you're going to have to pay an additional $9.99 each month um, in order to have like a subscription to Stadia Pro, which enables you to purchase games. Uh, there's a couple that are free each month and a couple that are discounted but aside from that the big titles you typically have to purchase so i think that this has been a pretty big turnoff for uh, most consumers who would even consider switching from an xbox to a playstation even though uh, relative to those uh those two consoles upfront costs and like uh live and online monthly costs it's a lot cheaper I think that um, Google was a little bit uh, misleading with how the pricing model works uh, and uh, definitely has to be a little bit sweeter if they want to, you know, really steal share from those two big runners, especially with how things have been panning out so far. All right, so all in all, I've been extremely happy with uh, the Stadia so far. Yes, there's been a couple hiccups uh, with the launch, but I think that's to be expected. Um, so far, I've played Destiny, and then there's this Mortal Kombat-esque game. I also downloaded Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which was part of the Stadia Pro package uh, that is like discounted for 40 bucks uh, Canadian. Uh, so yes, there's been a little bit of lag here and there, but you know I can I can deal with it. Maybe that's because I don't play like high res games all the time, um, and I'm relatively patient. But it it's something I can get a, I can get over, and I think is definitely going to improve in the future. So tying into my initial pro at the beginning of the video for innovation, I think that this is more of a future forward thing. It's something that we kind of you know play here and there, but I think it's got a lot more bang for its buck in the future when things advance and they can make a lot, make the product better than it is now, which is hard to do with a small amount of users. So it'll only get better with time. Uh, so I guess my, my all in all message here is I wouldn't necessarily switch to Stadia completely from Xbox or PlayStation, but I definitely think it's a very cool compliment to add to your gaming repertoire and play casually here and there. All right, guys, so thanks for tuning in. Hopefully the video wasn't too long. Tried to go over as much as I could, as quick as I could, and be, be as real as I could. Um, 
please do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions Stadia related, I don't have a huge following. I don't have a lot of time, but I have enough time to answer your comments. So feel free to ask away. I will more than likely respond. So uh, yeah, hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace.